know we are on our telephone line, and I believe we are on our computer line as well. Let me just double check something here. We are up. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do welcome you to the Wiley Drake Show. And uh, we're going to move some stuff around here a little bit so we're not blocking things as bad. And uh, that over there and this over here get a little bit better run at things. And we do thank you so much for being a part of the Wiley Drake Show today. We're hoping that we're going to get a uh, call from a gentleman with an organization that is uh, not necessarily Southern Baptist, but a very akin to those of us that are Southern Baptist. We also are going to be talking to you today about a new friend. I met a new friend through an old mentor, <coughs> a mentor of mine by the name of uh, Doyle Braden suggested a man to me, and uh, we have his book, and I uh, don't have it right here in front of me, but I did have it, but I don't know where I put it now, but anyway, uh, he has written a book, How Your Church Can Change the World, and uh, I hope you'll get that book. I have it. I have not read it yet, but I will. And after I've read it, I'll give you my full report on the book. And I would hope that you would do the same thing. I hope you would give us your report as well. Uh, as a lead-in to that, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a newspaper that uh, we as Southern Baptists put out. And this is called the Journal of the Southern Baptist Convention. You see, once a year, we as Southern Baptists, 16 million of us, uh, supposedly around the country, we really don't know how many of us there are, but there's a lot of us. And we produce a uh, journal of the Southern Baptist Convention. We also do a pre-convention special issue, and uh, that is the issue that I have before me here in my hand. And the uh, headline on this journal is IMB in AMB to host sending celebration during the Southern Baptist Convention annual meeting. Now, all of that is said to simply produce and say to you that um, we as Southern Baptists are going to go to Ohio you see, once a year, we as a denomination, we as a cooperative program organization, must come together to take care of business. Business is run through various organizations and entities of the Southern Baptist Convention all year long. But once a year, in the month of June, usually around the 15th of June, we come together for two or three days, actually more days than that, but two or three days of official business. That official business is to approve a budget. That official business is to take care of what we're going to do for the next coming year. This year's Southern Baptist Convention's annual meeting will feature a sending celebration as the conventions, two mission boards host a joint commissioning service. The International and North American Mission Board, IMB and NAMB, will celebrate commissioning overseas missionaries and North American church planters. That's men and women who are planting churches in North America, along with their sending churches. Together they'll answer God's call uh, to plant churches and make disciples in the United States and literally around the world. Good afternoon, God bless you, and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show live on the air 
and we're doing a special emphasis today. I have a little bias and a little prejudice because I've been a Southern Baptist now since 1965, and uh, so we, from time to time, have Baptists specialized on here, even though we do deal with a lot of other denominations. Now, when that bell rings, that means we have a caller on the line. Caller, would you like to identify yourself and tell us where you're calling from? Yes, Wiley, this is Blake. I'm calling you from uh, Texas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, over the years, we develop relationships as Southern Baptists with different people, different mentors and different uh, counselors and so forth. And one of the men that I have associated with over the years is James L. McCullough. Many of you know that he serves as the uh, at-large missionary for this arm of the Southern Baptist Convention. Now, we are not official Southern Baptist uh, television, nor are we official Southern Baptist media. However, we do go around the world, and we do do it every day of the year, not just at convention time. So, in meeting different people, I met a gentleman a number of years ago by the name of James L. McCullough, and James L. McCullough is a man that is a missionary at heart and serves the Lord and loves the Lord, and we praise God for him. And one of the things that he had brought to my attention several times is at the convention, we'd get very busy, and uh, I'd be wanting to find out and learn everything I could about what we as a denomination were doing. And Jim would recommend to me many times, well, Pastor, if you'll go by the, in those days we called it the tape booth, there are no tapes anymore, but if you go by there, you can get copies of all the sermons, all the music, all the reports, all that's going on. And I have on the line with me now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a, a dear friend that we've uh, known each other sort of from afar at the convention every year. His name is Blake Stiles and his wife, Connie. And they have an organization called SBC Tape. Uh, Blake, explain to us the relationship and the standing and just sort of go into what SBC Tapes is all about. Would you please? We you bet, Wiley. Uh, first off, uh, we're, we're a lot like Wiley. We support the Southern Baptist Convention, but we're not an official entity of the convention. Um, we've been working with them since uh, 1997. Hello. And uh, in those years, what we've done is... Uh, uh, we record the convention each year and the pastor's conference. And uh, we started out with simple old cassettes and VHS tapes. And uh, we make those recordings available for pastors and lay people uh, to, to purchase. Now, they're, they're not for free. We're a self-supporting ministry. The, the uh, convention doesn't give us a dime. In fact, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But um, over the years, we have recorded some of the greats, uh, you know, from... Uh, Adrian Rogers, Charles Stanley, uh, we've had, uh, I, mean, we've, I mean, it's just crazy people we, we recorded that come to the convention, Franklin Graham and, and his son, and uh, we have Condoleezza Rice we recorded one year, and, and what we what our purpose in life is, what my, my wife's ministry is here, is uh, we're not the message, and uh, we're not the messenger, but we're the uh, conduit between the, the people and the message. Because um, like Wiley says, a lot of people come to the convention, they get caught up in a lot of business and a lot of uh, meetings and, and uh, other things where they hear a great message. They say, man, you know, I got a guy at home that needs to hear that. And they'll come by and pick up uh, uh, a cassette at that time. And as we move through the years, of course, we're now in CDs and DVDs. And uh, then, of course, uh, with the uh, evolution of the Internet and everybody wanting things instantaneously or, you know, buy it tomorrow or get it yesterday sort of feeling, uh, we now have a website where uh, last year's convention is now where you can go and download recordings. And uh, there are two parts to what we do, Wiley. Uh, we started out originally just working with the pastor's conference, which is the two days prior to the convention itself. It's a Sunday night and, and all day Monday. And uh, a lot of people don't realize but that particular entity is not supported by the convention. It's it's uh, condoned by the convention. They, you know, they let them use the facilities and and give them a good deal on the equipment that they rent because it's already there ready to go for the convention. But the pastor's conference 
has to pay for that. And that's generally a pastor of a larger church, and he is responsible for raising all that money. Well, we, we over the years, have um, supported that ministry uh, big time. Um, but to the tune of over half of what we bring in gross goes back to the pastor's conference each year. So we support them. And then the convention just lets us record and, and, and sell and, and don't ask anything of us, and we keep our prices as low as possible. But as I was sharing with you yesterday, Wiley, uh, at the end of the month, we still have bills we have to pay. Sure. And so we are a business, and uh, we have to support ourselves. And uh, so the convention chooses not to spend the money and uh, have the equipment and take people to the convention to do stuff like this for them each year. We do it for them free, and we... Uh, they, you know, it's been a good relationship. Uh, and Wiley, one thing I want to share that's funny, you should, I shared this with you yesterday. We, uh, I was born with the Baptist faith and message in my right hand. I'm, I'm 58 years old. I've been a Southern Baptist my entire life. Uh, grew up in a small town in North Georgia. I've always loved the convention. I've always heard about going to the annual convention, and now I go every year, and, and I feel it's an honor and a privilege to serve in doing that. And I also respect the name SBC, which is, you know, over the years we've gotten kicked around a little bit. Uh, nothing really bad, but you know how, how that goes in the media sometimes. So just to make sure that the convention was comfortable, we created SBC tapes just to be sure that um, people could, um, when they got back to their office and they got their credit card bill or they looked at their check stub, they could say SBC tapes. Oh, yeah, I bought some recordings at the convention. Well, I got permission with the convention to use that. Uh, and I, I respect and honor that uh, those initials, but it really doesn't stand for Southern Baptist Convention. It stands for Styles, Blake, and Connie tapes. So uh, it's just kind of funny that we use that, and uh, and we will continue using that. And we won't take the name tapes off because we've been using that for years. It's just a branding of who we are. But we we gave up tapes a long, long time ago. Yeah. Well, brother, I think we all have. I you know, I told somebody I was at a youth meeting not too long ago, and. And, and one of the ladies that was, uh, in fact, a young lady, very young, young lady, had a great voice, and she was singing, and uh, she was part of the program and so forth. And when it was all over, uh, I, uh, I said something to her about how much I appreciated how much God blessed me through her music. And I said to her, I, I looked at her, and I said, could, could I, would it be possible for me to get a tape of you singing that song? And she looked at me like a, a calf at a new gate, you know, like what the yeah. hell is that old man talking about? And I wondered why she was just sort of neglecting me. <laughs> and so later uh, I heard her ask her mother, Mother, what was he asking me for? And she said, well, he wanted a tape of you singing. And she yeah. turned to him and said, Mother, what's a tape? And she literally had no idea what a tape was. And the mother, of course, wasn't as old as me, but she was obviously well up in years. And, and she laughed and she said, well, baby, you remember when mom used to have those cassettes? And Oh, you mean a cassette. So there was an example of a young lady in today's age that had no idea what a tape was. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And we still get them called tapes. I mean, go to the tape table. It's yeah. just a habit that won't die. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and brother, I, I'm the same way. I am very proud. I, I became a Southern Baptist in 1965, and I've been one ever since. Back in 2007, I had the privilege to be elected by the convention, by the messengers of the convention. And those of you that understand Baptist terms will know what I'm talking about. But the Baptist people of the Southern Baptist Convention elected me as second vice president of the convention. And I still refer to myself as the 2007 uh, second vice president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And uh, uh, so I like SBC, and I like SBC tapes. I'm glad that you all are still using that. And you are indeed, may not be official but you are indeed a Southern Baptist. And one of the greatest compliments a man paid me not too long ago, I was at a particular state association meeting, a state organization, and I was there. And, of course, I always carry uh, my video equipment with me. And we were videoing. I asked for permission, and they allowed me to. And, and one of the guys uh, made the comment. He said to me, uh, you know, Wiley Drake may not be officially a part of the Southern Baptist Convention, 
here taping this, but I'll tell you something. Wiley Drake is SBC uh, to the core, and I took that as a real compliment, and I still do. I, I believe in the cooperative program. I believe in the Baptist faith and message, and some of those people that you have recorded and put on tape and DVDs and CDs and so forth have been men that have been my mentors over the year. Dr. Adrian Rogers, who's now in heaven. Dr. Stanley, who is still with us. But I could go on down the list of those great mighty men of God that uh, I, as a local pastor, uh, being with the stress that most pastors have, I always was told, I was told by an old Baptist preacher many, many years ago by the name of Vance Havner. Uh, I said, Mr. Havner, uh, would it be okay for me to use that sermon? He preached a very good sermon that I liked. And he said, son, you use it any way you'd like to use it. He said, I see a sermon like a bullet in a rifle. And he said, if my bullet fits your rifle, shoot it, brother. <laughs> and you know, so... Well, Riley, what you're saying, let me, let me jump in here real quick. Because sure. What you're saying is very important. What uh, The mission of my company, uh, we're not a ministry. People, we're a business that supports ministries. And... Uh, because we, we want to, you know, we like I say, we, we need to make ends meet, and, and we do well. God blesses us uh, uh, greatly. But, you know, the most important thing to what we do is some of the stories that we get back from people. And I uh, I got a couple I want to share with you real quickly that I think will, will tell people why we do what we do. Now, by the way, we don't only do the Southern Baptist Convention. There are other state agencies that we do, and we have a secular side of our business. And, and so we have a lot of people that we've recorded over the years, but... A few years ago, back, uh, gosh, I guess it's been 10 or 12 years ago, um, we were doing the Nevada Baptist Evangelism Conference. They had one every every year, and we no longer do that when they change their pattern of what they do. But Rick Stanley, you know who Rick Stanley is? Absolutely. He's a step brother. Well, Rick, we record him several times over the years. And so as we finished recording him, uh, my wife and I, which are the only two people in our, our business full-time, we have a pocket of people around the country that we use as we do jobs. But, uh, but we, we were standing at the table, and we were, we were just churning out those tapes. And it was cassette tape time on that. And as I'm facing a man at the table, a lady comes over and taps me on my right shoulder. I was at the end of the table. And I said, ma'am, excuse me, I'm waiting on this man. She says, i got to go, sir. I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. And the man in front of me is very gracious. So I turned and said, ma'am, what can I do for you? She said, well, ma'am, he said, sir, um, I need one of those Rick Stanley tapes, and I've got to go. My husband's waiting for me outside. And I said, okay. And so when I'm throwing out the door. She said, do you know why I need that Rick Stanley tape? I said, no, uh, tell me the story. She said, well, my husband, I've been trying to get him to go to church. And he thinks every preacher is a, is, is a, a charlatan and, you know, and all this stuff. And she said, but guess who his favorite singer is? And it hit me. Elvis Presley. Yeah. And she said, I want to take Rick Stanley, Elvis Presley's stepbrother, and share it with my husband. Amen. And at that point, at that point, I had an epiphany. I realized it's not who I am, but it is important who I am. Don't get me wrong, but it's what I can do that God's given me the ability to do. And so that's why we have these great recordings, and we still have them all. We have every recording we've ever done from the Southern Baptist Convention. Amen. And uh, then the other story is a personal friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, uh, I gave him a, a recording I heard at the Oklahoma Evangelism Conference. And then he took that home, and he listened to it, and he came under conviction, and he had decided he had never really accepted Christ in the way he should have. Mm. It had been, he'd gone through seminary and everything, and he stepped into the baptismal pools again and was baptized in front of our church. And, uh, and I, I'm just thinking, you know, Lord, there's two stories you told me. One of the countless stories of recordings that have yes. gone in people's yeah. hands that have changed people's lives. It's not me, but thank you for allowing my business and my uh, skills and you know the equipment you provided to me to get these words out to other people. And that's what keeps Connie and me going. Amen. Uh, we have Amen. Some, we have some conferences. We have some conferences. We don't think we'll get the the, uh, the bread uh, enough bread at the end to you know make a make a wish sandwich as they used to say. <laughs> but uh, we. Uh, and then God blesses this country and surprises me around the corner. So we've never missed a meal. You've seen me, Wiley. I'm, I'm, I, I don't I don't like I've missed a meal. <laughs> we, we feel, we feel blessed in what we do. Amen. We feel, we feel blessed in what we do. And uh, we, uh, 
and people like the Hitchhiker, he always gets them from us, and he has stories where he shared them around. I know uh, he's, he's always a pleasure to see at the conference, and of course, your pleasure to see at the conference each year, too. Looking forward to seeing you in Columbus. Well, brother, we're looking forward to Columbus. Hitchhiker and I have already made our plans to, to be there and to be a part of that. And, uh, brother, uh, one of the things uh, we've been doing this television show that is right now being broadcast literally all over the world on the Internet, it is streamed and it's done everywhere in the world. We have people all over the world contact us. And one of the things that I'm known for, uh, people call me the story man. I love to tell stories. And I have a jillion of them. And uh, all of them are about what God has used uh, in order to win someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, boy, what a great opportunity. That's why you're talking about God providing we have advertised for every kind of music and every kind of ministry and every kind of Christian business. All we require is, is that they be Bible-based people. That is, they believe in the Bible, they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're Bible-based. And we will advertise for them here live on the air at absolutely no cost. Uh, and, and, and God's blessed us. We've been on the air now over 15 years. And God is blessed it immensely. And uh, we do two one-hour shows uh, every day, Monday through Friday, and then shows even in between. And so we just praise the Lord for what he has done and what he's doing through SBC Tapes. Thank you for being a part of the kingdom's work, including the Southern Baptist Convention, including the Wiley Drake Show. And we have this Wiley Drake Show uh, is also the arm of the Congressional Prayer Conference. And we pray 23 hours a week, 23 hours a week, this prayer line is open. And we have yet to not be able to pay our bills. God has blessed us because we've been willing to serve him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Blake Stiles on with me, a man who has been at the helm, if you will, with his dear wife, Connie. And the reason I remember his wife's name is because my mother-in-law's name was Connie, a godly, godly woman, gone home to be with the Lord now, but her name was Connie, and I used to kid uh, about her name was Connie Stevens. And Blake is probably uh -huh. old enough to remember the movie star Connie Stevens. Oh, yeah. And uh, when uh, my wife and I were married living in Texas, Connie Stevens, my mother-in-law, lived out here in California. And one day I was in a, a Western Union office back in those days when uh, our mother-in-law, my mother-in-law said, I'm not going to send gifts to the kids this year for Christmas. It costs too much to ship them. I'm going to just send you a money order and you go do the shopping for the kids for me. And of course we appreciated that and we were, you know, a poor family, didn't have much money and so I went down to Western Union to pick up our money order that she had sent and there was a dear sweet lady behind the counter said, can I help you? And I said, yes ma'am, I'm here to pick up a money order. And she said, well, what's your name? And I told her and she looked and she said, well, I, I can't seem to find it. She said, who sent you that money order? I said, well, it was Connie Stevens, my mother-in-law. And so she said, oh, yeah, here it is right here. And before it was over, she said, uh, is your mother-in-law really Connie Stevens? Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely. And so my wife looked at me and gave me a hard look. And then later in the car, she said, baby, you lied to that woman. I said, I did not. I did not tell her it was the movie star Connie Stevens. She asked me if Connie Stevens was my mother-in-law. And Connie Stevens, your mother is my mother-in-law. And I told the truth. And she said, honey, that'll catch you one of these days. And another time we were in a Western Union office, and the lady asked me the same question. And she said, oh, my goodness. I almost feel like I need to get your autograph if you're the, the son-in-law of Connie Stevens. And my wife looked at me, and the lady said, Are you really, are you really the son-in-law of Connie Stevens? I said, Yes, ma'am, I sure am. And my wife elbowed me. She said, Honey, tell the truth. <laughs> 
So I did, and I told her, yeah, it, my mother-in-law's name is Connie Stevens, but not the movie star. So I had to fess up, and that's my Connie Stevens story. And later years, I was on an airplane coming back to L.A., and I was on the plane with the movie star, Connie Stevens. And I wanted to go up to first class and meet her, and the stewardess didn't like that too well, and Miss Stevens said, oh, that's okay, let him come on up. And I told her my Connie Stevens story <laughs> about how I'd, I'd said that for years and finally got caught in it. And when we got to L.A., we landed. And back in those days, the wife and kids could come out to the uh, sure. come yeah. out and meet you at the airplane. So when I got there, my kids, she said, is your family going to meet you here at the airport? I said, yes. She said, okay, let's do something. So when we went off the airplane, she put both arms around me and gave me a big kiss right there in front of my wife and my kids. <laughs> and my kids were... With your wife again. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she, my kids said, Dad, we didn't know you knew Connie Stevens. We had heard you tell those stories. We didn't know you really knew her. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't know that. I just met her on the airplane. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, Blake Stiles on with me. Blake, tell our listening audience if they would like to get in touch with you uh, before, even now, or after the convention and get recordings sure. of what goes on. How do they do that? Well, uh, the simplest way, of course, is to go into the Internet. If you're, everybody here's on the Internet, so obviously they know how to get there. Um, it's, it's info at sbctapes.com uh, is, e is my email. Um, if you just go to the site, which is really simply www.sbctapes.com, you'll see the uh, store where you can go in and get recordings from last year's convention. And by the way, there's some recordings from some women on there too because we do the women's conference that takes place during the pastor's conference too. So some of your lady listeners out there might want to look through that and see. Um, this, is, this is the first year that we put that on there as far as a download site. But all the order forms from the previous years of the convention should be on there. And you're welcome to open them up and look at them and see the names and who spoke. And uh, and if you see something that you like, you're welcome to print out that form. Um, if you'd like to call us, now we, we, uh, we're we very economical here, my wife and myself. Uh, like I said, we're the only two employees, unless you count our three cats who kind of <laughs> rule the roost around here. Uh, but uh, and our son's here with us too. But uh, we're generally on the road a good bit. So calling us is a possibility, and you're welcome to do that. And that number is 817-656-1258. And uh, we are in Central Time. Uh, we're generally open from about 9 in the morning till about 5 in the afternoon. But if you miss us, please leave a message with information, and we will call you back. Um, I want to share one set. I shared this with you while yesterday that has been a real blessing to us, a blessing to a lot of people. Um, your Southern Baptist listeners out there probably remember Dr. Adrian Rogers. I mean, if you've been on the radio and I mean, listen to the radio, the, the booming voice of God here in America, I think God bar borrows his voice from, from Adrian Rogers, so he's glad to have it back now that Adrian's in his presence. Amen. But uh, Adrian was one of the greatest preachers I've ever heard. He could tell a story and, and just and, and drive it home. Uh, but we, uh, when he passed away a few years ago, I got in touch with his wife, lovely wife, and their ministry out of Memphis, and spoke with them about the possibility of putting together the, the Adrian Rogers set. And basically what we did is we went to the archives in Nashville, where the, all the recordings from the Southern Baptist Convention are kept, uh, and went through there and think we found every sermon that Adrian had done, mm -hmm. and we even think we found the first one he ever did at the Southern Baptist Convention. Mm -hmm. It's a bad tape. It does not sound as good as you'd like, but because he drops out in places and scrambles in places, but we cleaned it up as best as we could and put all of that together into a CD set. And uh, it is some of the best preaching. Uh, we still get orders from that. People will see that online and they'll want to order that as a gift for a friend. Amen. Or just something from this with Dr. Uh, Dr. Rogers or just something for themselves to listen to and get inspired. Uh, and we give part of that money back to his ministry. So uh, that's one of our 
ongoing items that we have on that website if you want to look at. It's not downloadable, it's only orderable, but uh, you certainly are welcome to drop us a note. The best way is probably to get us through the internet, but just drop us an email at info at sbctapes.com, and we'll Amen. get back and work it out. Or you can download the order form on that site and just mail it in or fax it in. So, uh, But I, I'm not, I don't like to push my wares. Uh, I, I'm kind of humble at that. I still like to make a living, but uh, that's one set that I think people really would, could use and could share with others and really make some differences in your life because there's some, there's some great stories in there. Well, you're absolutely right, uh, Blake, and I, I appreciate you sharing that. And, and, and I know you're a humble man and not wanting to push your wares, but I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, I would recommend highly getting that set. It will absolutely bless your socks off. And, and, and in light of that, I have a little bit of an Adrian Rogers story that I'd like to tell, and that is you talked about his dear, dear sweet wife. Well, back in the day, back when Adrian was, quote, in his heyday, and back when we as Southern Baptists were going through what has been referred to as the conservative resurgence, Dr. Rogers, we were at the convention one year, many years ago, and Dr. Rogers and his dear wife came over and introduced themselves and, and said, where are you all from? And, oh, you're from California and so forth. And we just fellowship for a few minutes. And uh, Dr. Rogers said, uh, Wiley, uh, let's you and I get together and have a cup of coffee. I want to talk to you. And I, I said, man, that'd be, that'd be absolutely great. And so I did. And basically what happened at that meeting was that Dr. Rogers said, Wiley, we're in the throes now where we are needing to push forward with this resurgence. And Dr. Rogers was a wise, wise man. And he said, Wiley, uh, those of us that are in leadership role, those of us that pastor the big churches, are going to do everything we can. But we need some, we need some pastors out there uh, in the field. We need some pastors uh, I said, well, Dr. Rogers, you mean you need some pastors that are nobodies, <laughs> not somebodies. And he said, well, I wasn't going to say that, Wiley, but that's right. He said, we need somebody that can go to the microphone, that has a gift to gab like you do, uh, and yet is not a pastor of a big church somewhere. And so we need you to help us. And so Dr. Rogers took me under his wing, and so I spent a great deal of my time going to microphones and and making motions and doing things and so forth and so on. And Dr. Rogers is the one that trained me. And the other beauty of that story is, is that when we would get to convention every year, Dr. Rogers, Dr. Stanley, and others would get together and have a meeting. And I'd always be invited because they said, well, we've got to have our microphone man there at the meeting for our planning. And so, dear, sweet <laughs> Miss Rogers would turn to my wife, Barbara, and say, Barbara, these guys are going to be talking all night. Let's go shopping. <laughs> so his dear sweet wife would always take my wife under her wing and take her shopping or take her for coffee or tea. And then she found out later, she said, Wiley, I really like Barbara. And uh, my wife told me later, she said, I, I, I don't understand why she likes me so well. And, and, and so uh, Mrs. Rogers overheard that. <laughs> And she turned to my wife, Barbara, and said, Barbara, I love you because you're the only Baptist preacher's wife I know that's a tea drinker, <laughs> a hot tea drinker. And she said, I love hot tea, and we always have hot tea together. And so that's just uh, another one of my little crazy stories that is uh, dear to my heart about Adrian and his dear, dear sweet wife, and I miss him terribly and uh, along with many other mentors from the Southern Baptist Convention. But ladies and gentlemen, go to the website, and it's real simple, SBC, sbctapes.com. And if you want to get more information, you want to send them an email, again, it's real simple. Just go to info, I-N-F-O, at sbctapes.com. I would recommend, in fact, the matter is, if you order... If you get Dr. Rogers' set, if you get that, I will let you, I'll invite you to come on my television show Monday through Friday uh, and give you as much time on the air as you need to talk about your experience with that set. Whether you're a pastor or a pastor's wife or a missionary or whatever, if you get that set, I want to give you the incentive 
You can come on the Wiley Drake Show and tell us about your ministry and tell us about what God's doing in your heart and in your life and tell us about what God did through your purchasing of that tape. That's just a little Wiley Drake sales incentive for you. Uh, get that, and we'll be glad to put you on the air. And by the way, even whether you get the set or not, I hope you do, but by the way, uh, we'd love to have a pastor or missionary or teacher Anyone, come on. I had a lady call me last week and say, Pastor, uh, somebody told me to call you. And she said, I'm not a pastor, not a pastor's wife, uh, but I am a missionary, and I'd like to come on your show and tell about what God's done in my life as a missionary. So in the very near future, she's going to be in the studio here with me, and we're going to highlight her as a Southern Baptist missionary. And that's what we love to do. I love to brag on Jesus and love to brag on Southern Baptist because I believe we've got, you know, we've got, we're not perfect by any stretch of even my imagination, but we are a good denomination and we're, uh, we're a great group of people that love Jesus and that's what we're trying to do. So, brother, I'm looking forward to seeing you again at the convention in Ohio and got, looking forward to seeing your wife again and looking forward to getting by there and and picking up some tapes, even though they won't be tapes. And uh, I encourage all of you, go by the table. Go by the SBC table. And uh, if you don't know where it's at, you call me. I'll tell you how to get there because I'm going. that's the first thing I'm going to find. And I know the hitchhiker who's here in the studio with me will say, okay, Wiley, we got to go to the tape table. <laughs> And, and happy smile on his face and a good blessing in his in his lips. And so we're looking forward to getting that again every year. We we live off that blessing for an entire year, get chakra so. Amen. Well he can hear you right now. He's sitting here in the studio with me. And fact of the matter is, I uh, uh several years ago I appointed him as the the correspondent at large for the Wiley Drake show. And I always ended up by saying he is the correspondent at large, and when you see him, you'll know why I call him at large, because he, he is a man. He is he is a man that is large. I want you to know he has a large body, but he also has a large soul, and he also has a large spirit, and I love him dearly. And we're looking forward to being at the convention with you again. SBCTapes.com, ladies and gentlemen. Or email them at info at sbctapes.com. Call them on the telephone, 817. That's down in Cowtown. I recognize that uh, area code, 817-656-1258. And I'll tell you one last story before I let you go. You know there's a place that it's not, it's not Southern Baptist now, so you've got to bear with me. There is a place in Cowtown called Gillies. Well, back in the old days, before I was a very dedicated Southern Baptist, I had a tendency to go out to the bars and drink a little bit. And uh, when I did that, I also was a rodeo bull rider. I rode Brahma bulls in the rodeo circuit. And I heard about something that was going to happen in Fort Worth. They were going to have the first bull riding in the bar. And so Gilly, Mickey Gilly and him set up a bar, put the fence up inside the bar so they could have a bull riding in the bar at Gilly's. And I'm the first cowboy that ever rode a bull in a bar at Mickey Gilly's in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, well, that, I can't say I've done that. <laughs> and I often say that and five bucks will get you Starbucks, but somebody told me the other day when I said that, Starbucks is more than five dollars now. <laughs> Amen. Well, brother, God bless you. Uh, we're thank looking you, forward thank to. Thank you for the time. Um, after the convention, we'll get back together, and I'll, I'll share some of the messages and the stories of the messages. We got a great lineup this year. Uh, unfortunately, you may have heard that Ben Carson was supposed to speak, but. Uh, and it was, it was a wise decision with him announcing for his presidential run. They really didn't want to make the convention, the pastor's conference, a, a media circus. So he gracefully bowed out. 
and a, a fine pastor by the name of Ted Trailer, who was in, at Olive Baptist down in Pensacola, is taking his place. Another great pastor. Amen. Um, uh, one, one funny story, two funny stories while I, I do need to go tonight. Uh, you may hear I'm losing my voice. The allergies are tearing me up here in Texas. Um, one guy came up one day at the convention. I've got the sweetest people working at the sales table, my wife and several other people. One guy walks up the very first day of the convention and says, I'd like to get a set of the tapes and take them with me right now. And uh, my salesperson just looked at him. He, she says, sir, I'm not sure what he means. He says, well, I want to take a set of tapes with me right now. She says, sir, I pretty sure we can put you a set of tapes together, but you ain't going to like them. And he said, why? He said, there ain't nothing on them. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you're recording, you're recording these here at the conference? Yes, sir. These are the ones that are taking place here at the conference. So that that was funny. And, and yeah. He, uh, he finally he placed his order and came back at the end and picked it up. But, <laughs> but the other one that I think it's always funny is we always have a pastor that goes out each year. And go, there are about 12, goes goes every year. There are about 12 messages this year. He says, I always take these messages home. If I'm not feeling the spirit, I'll listen to a good one. Then I'll copy it down and preach it the next Sunday. Amen. So, uh, these are 12 sermons that you will hear around the country throughout the year, I'm sure. So, Amen. But, well, I guarantee you, I guarantee you one of the things I say, people say I'm a very active pastor, and I am, but I'm the biggest sermon stealer there is. I steal sermons from everybody and, and make, no, make no bones about it. If anybody ever says, well, I heard so-and-so preach that, I say, well, Vince Havner told me that if that bullet fit my rifle, shoot it, and that's what I did. <laughs> Well, brother, God bless you. Good talking with you. Good talking with you, and we'll be praying for you, praying for your throat and praying for your voice. And uh, God bless you. Please tell your wife, Connie, hello for us. And uh, we don't talk to you again. We'll see you in uh, Ohio. Ohio in a few weeks here. Yes. Have a blessed evening, gentlemen, and uh, uh, we'll see you again in a few weeks. Amen. God bless you, brother. Have a great evening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Blake Stiles, sbctapes.com. Go there. And uh, Andrew Herbert, I don't know Andrew. I don't know Andy. I guess he goes by Andy, but there's an article here in SBC Live uh, from uh, Andrew Herbert. And he said, I've had the privilege of serving as the chairman of the SBC Committee on Order of Business this year. We need to pray for that, brother. That's a hard job. Our committee has worked diligently alongside Southern Baptist Convention President Ronnie Floyd. I'll be in Washington, D.C. with Ronnie Floyd next week, folks. I'm going to be hobnobbing with the rich and famous. I'll be with Dr. President Ronnie Floyd next week at the Watchman on the Wall ministry there in Washington, D.C. But he says to ensure that the year's meeting is one of the most impactful of gatherings Southern Baptists have ever experienced. Here's what's different about this year's meeting. Visible unity. Everything about the meeting has been driven by the vision of the president to display visibly the unity we have in Christ. Amen, amen to Dr. Ronnie. From a joint seminary report and presentation time on Tuesday morning to a joint missionary commissioning service on Wednesday, our leaders will stand together demonstrating the unity of the Southern Baptist Convention. If Southern Baptists are going to reach the world, for Jesus, we will do it together. And as we often say, we can do so much more together than we can separately. Not only will be, there be a visible unity, and I'm going to be a part of that unity, folks, and there's going to be a great diversity. The great diversity of our convention will be on display at this year's meeting. Convention worship leaders uh, Julio Arido, a native of Mexico, will lead us in inspiring and refreshing times of worship. Those who have been chosen to pray and read scripture passages during the uh, sessions uh, represent not just our ethnic diversity, but also the diversity of our ministries. 
small and large church pastors from rural and urban areas, representatives of our association, state conventions, and seminaries, every person chosen intentionally to represent our diversity. We'll have visible unity. We'll have diversity. And we'll have a great commission emphasis. That ain't new. <laughs> we do that every time. But the entire Wednesday morning session will emphasize our commitment to the Great Commission, culminating in a joint missionary commissioning service. We will celebrate what God is doing through the International Mission Board and the North American Mission Board as well in what will be the centerpiece, the centerpiece of our annual convention. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to watch it if you can't be there. But I want to give you my little coin phrase again. Boots on the ground or prayer in the air. You can be boots on the ground in Ohio with us. I'm going to be. Join us. Let's see who this is. Good afternoon and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. You're live on the air. Hello? Yes, my... I'm sorry? Where are you, my brother? Uh, I am in Blessed Bar 5 with uh, 60 Ramonas coming, coming now. Uh, that's that's the way. Okay, well, brother, we'll see you when you get here. Well, don't worry about it, brother. We will be here. Okay, okay. I, I will come. Tell our listening, tell our, we're on the television right now. Tell our listening audience your name, would you please? Yes, it's good. Everything is okay. I, will, I am in the way now. All right, what is your name? All right, my brother, we'll see you when you get here. Thank you so much for calling. We'll see you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a gentleman that's coming here. And uh, I need to... Uh, Hitchhiker, would you come over here, please, and uh, relieve me just for a moment? I want to ask you if you would... Uh, to come over here and have a seat and be on the air and lead us in prayer. And I want to go get this man's uh, name, if I can, okay. because I got old and I can't remember his name. So sit down there and lead us in prayer for the Southern Baptist Convention. All right. <laughs> As requested, Father God, I bring before you our Southern Baptist Convention, each one of our pastors, Lord God, Amen. whether it be large or small churches, Father God, we ask that you give them the strength that's necessary to continue, Father God, to be strong in the word, Amen. to open the eyes of the, those that are, that they are shepherding, Lord God. Father God, you place them in these positions to glorify your name. And so we ask, Lord, that they teach and preach thy word Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for our convention. Yes, Lord. We thank you for uh, the purpose here, Father God, and that's to reach this world for Christ. Amen. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, continue to give us the strength to go on in the mighty name of Jesus, reaching out and touching each and every one, Father God, letting our light shine, that they too will say, what must I do to be saved? Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. And thank you for the Southern Baptist Convention, whether it be Chinese, Korean, Filipino, Hispanic. Each and every one of us, Father God, have come together to make up the body of Christ and to make a difference in this nation, glorifying your holy and blessed name. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing through us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. 
Amen, amen. Thank you, Hitchhiker. And I wanted to go back to the phone because I got a phone call earlier today from a dear, dear, dear brother in Christ. And uh, he is on the same wavelength that the Hitchhiker and I are on in helping people. Uh, and uh, he called me up and said, I have a friend uh, that needs some help. And they know that we have a sanctuary here at the church. And so this gentleman is a pastor, and his name is Mustafa Id, Mustafa Id, E-I-D, and he is a former Muslim that came to know Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. and he got saved, and he's been telling the whole world about Yeshua HaMashiach and how he used to be a Muslim, and he's not anymore. And now he's a born-again child of God, a Christian. But he needs a place to stay. And it just so happens that the Lord has provided for us here at this church. We have what I call a prophet's room. You remember that dear lady in the Bible. She had an upstairs room. Uh, and when the prophet would come to town, that's where she'd put him up. And uh, we don't have an upstairs room for him. But we do have a room here that we refer to as the prophet's room. It's not anything elaborate. It's, got a, it's a small room, but it's got a bed and a table and a chair and a refrigerator, and it's got the basics of life. It's got a bathroom down the hall and a shower down the hall, but uh, there are all the amenities of home there for him, and so he's on his way here, but he got caught in a parking lot called the Santa Ana Freeway, and he's on his way here, and he'll be here shortly. But I want you to pray for Mustafa, M-O-U-S-T-A-F-A, -A, Mustafa. His last name is E-I-D, and I don't have the slightest idea how to pronounce that. Mustafa is pretty clear, M-O-U-S-T-A-F-A, -A, Mustafa. But Ed, E-I-D, I guess that's what that is. But anyway, he's going to be a resident of the prophet room here at the First Southern Baptist Church. I don't know how long. That'll be up to the Lord and to him. And so he's on his way here. I would appreciate you praying for this man. I don't know his circumstances, but let me tell you why I was willing to take him in sort of sight unseen, and uh, so forth. The reason I did is because a dear, dear friend of mine called me up this afternoon, early in the afternoon, and said, Wiley, uh, I need a place for Mustafa to be able to come and to be able to stay. And he didn't say how long. I just said, send him on down. Because I know this man. This man's name is Stephen. He's a Stephen. You remember Stephen in the Bible? And uh, he is a Stephen. His name is Steve. His last name is Klein. That's a good German name, Stephen Klein. And Stephen is a mighty, mighty warrior for God. And by the way, hitchhiker, if you hear somebody go, Oorah, you'll know Steve is here because he's a Marine. He's a jarhead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when Steve called me up and said, he didn't say why, didn't say what his circumstances was, just he needed a place. And I know that Marine, I know he wouldn't send somebody here unless it was a legitimate need and a legitimate uh, way for us to help. So that Marine, Steve Klein, sent Mustafa. And in a few minutes or hour or so, depending on the freeway, Mustafa will be here and meet another Marine. A Marine recommended him here, and when he gets here, he's going to meet a Marine uh, that's here on staff with us, and that is our dear, dear brother in the Lord, uh, James L. McCullough. Oorah! Oorah! Yeah, hallelujah. Simplified. Now, it's going to be a visible unity. It's going to have diversity, talking about the Southern Baptist Convention. It's going to have a great commission emphasis. And I could have told you we're going to have that because I knew Jim was going to be there. And if Jim is at the convention, there's going to be an emphasis on the Great Commission. I assure you of that. He might not be one of the speakers, but I guarantee you he'll be up and down the hallways, the highways, and the byways 
telling them about the Great Commission about Jesus and also concise business. Uh, I, I hope that's going to happen. I think it will. But uh, we're going to have crossover, crossover Columbia, and we're going to go to Ohio, and I'm going to have a story to tell in Ohio. Amen. See, when I was a little boy, I was a slow learner. Mama didn't know about ADD and AD and all that kind of stuff, but I was a slow learner because I didn't pay attention. I was looking out the window rather than listening to the teacher. And so I was a slow learner. And I remember one time we were in a project in school, and our teacher was a very patriotic woman. And she said, if you're from the United States of America, at that time we only had 48 states. She said, you ought to be able to spell the name of every one of the 48 states. And I said, wow, I'm in trouble. Especially when it comes to Massachusetts. I couldn't even say it. And, uh, you know, so forth. So she said, but that's going to be our project for the year. We're going to learn how to spell all 48 of the United States. And, you know, in my story here, one of the hardest states for me to learn how to spell, for some strange reason, was where we're going to have our convention in Ohio. And I don't know why I had trouble learning how to spell Ohio, but then I learned how to spell Ohio because my mama said it's round on both ends and high in the middle. <laughs> round on both ends and high in the middle. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, O and high, H I. And O, Ohio. And so I thank golly, I learned how to spell Ohio because my mama said it's round on both ends and high in the middle. <laughs> well, folks, Ohio is going to be round on both ends when we're there, but it's going to be high in the middle. We're going to be high on Jesus. And the national call for prayer to all Southern Baptists for the next Great Awakening, led by Dr. Ronnie Floyd, Tuesday evening. June the 16th, when worship begins, we're going to hear Timmy Chavis, Steve Gaines, David Galvan, Jack Graham, great mighty man of God, another Texan, Vance Pittman, Hope Church, Las Vegas, Nevada, James Merritt, great godly man, uh, Duluth, Georgia, and also Brother Paul Kim. Antioch Baptist Church, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he's uh, chairman of the Southern Baptist EC Asian Advisory Council. And J.D. Greer, the Summit Church, Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> and that's where the hitchhiker's from, that area. Ted Trailer, we heard about him a while ago. Olive Baptist Church, Pensacola, Florida. And Ken Whitten, Senior Pastor, Idlewild Church, Lutz, Florida. K. Marshall Williams, Senior Pastor, Nazarene Baptist Church, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. National African American Fellowship. And Julio Arrio, Global Worship Pastor. Well, praise the Lord. These men are going to be preaching to us and for us and with us. And then he must increase pastor's conference. We'll be hearing from Dr. Ronnie Floyd. And we'll be hearing from Travis uh, Cortwell. And, uh, we'll be hearing from some other great guys. They're preaching the word of God. Dr. Ben Carson has stepped down because he's running for president. Dr. Ben, you'd have been welcomed by Wiley, I guarantee you. Because see, when I was second vice president, I was going to be running for the vice president of the United States. And so you'd be welcome in my heart and in my mind. And uh, we praise the Lord. A lot of good things going on. Send North American. Monday the 15th, David Platt, Louis uh, Giglio, Eric Mason, and the Passion Band are going to be uh, leading us in worship and leading us in music. Crossover to build on gospel momentum that's already been built there. Collegiate reaching in Ohio. Three key decisions they're going to be talking about. How did we get here? 
and where are we going? How did we get here, and where are we going? And we thank the Lord for that. Ohio's rich Baptist history, right mission field, State Convention of the Baptists of Ohio, and I'm looking at this paper, and uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Brother Jim had shared with us, reaching Native Americans, mission from mission field to mission force, burnt swamp, association strives to reach Native Americans. Those are our Indian friends, and Amen. Uh, we're going to be praying with them and for them as they're there. And we think the advisory group tackles generational strategical challenges. The Chinese church operates and serves for God's glory. Pastors' wives uh, are going to have a meeting. Churches needed established procedures regarding weddings and funerals. And we're going to be talking about that at the convention. And we thank the Lord for that. Golden Gate Seminary uh, is asking for name change. Uh, I'm not going to go there today on that. <laughs> Too late in the show to cover that. But uh, I'm not that big on name changes. My name's been Wiley all my life, and I ain't going to change it. And uh, I did add Coyote there one time because I needed a handle from a CB radio. But the convention to consider second vote on proposed amendment to Article 3 of the Southern Baptist Convention. We'll look at that later. Cooperative program staged to highlight cooperative Program Fueled Ministries. We've only got a couple of minutes, folks. If you want to call, hurry up and call in. We'll take your call. But unless you call within the next two minutes, we're going to be history here in a little bit. Hitchhiker, thank you so much. Would you do me, let me put you back to work again. Would you close us out in prayer, please? Yes, sir. <clears throat> oh, Father God, as we look at the path that we've traveled as Southern Baptist, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that we've been an example to this world of what Almighty God can do through us, to us, and sometimes even in spite of us. Mm -hmm. But gracious Father in heaven, you've truly been a blessing to this convention and those that have come together to spread the gospel. We thank you, Father God, for that each one of the nationalities, Father God, that have come here to America to find their way. Yes, Lord. But they found Jesus instead. Yes, Got Lord. excited and were willing to go back Thank to you, Japan, Lord. China, Russia, and all of those other areas, Father God, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, that they are not hidden, brothers and sisters in Christ, but they are open and up front and willing to let their light shine. We thank you, Father God, that we are able to glorify your holy and blessed name through this mighty convention, Father God, and the impact it has on the churches and the pastors across this nation. And although we are Southern Baptists, we have influence, Father God, with our Jewish brothers and sisters. We have influence with Lutheran and Methodist and Catholic and all those others, Father God, because you are using us to make a difference, to let our light shine, and we thank you for that. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, as we move forward and learn, Father God, how to share you with others, we ask, Lord God, that you continue to strengthen us, continue to help us make a difference in this nation, Father God, that, Lord God, that day will come when you will say, O oh, good and faithful servant, Amen. thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing through us and for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.